my name is Joyce Iwashko. I'm one of the uh, artist, curator and directors of Dust Rising. My name is Cornelia Hermes and I'm also one of the artists, curators and directors. Uh, my name is Terry Shave. I'm an artist and a curator and a director of Dust Rising too. Dust Rising is an artist-led visual arts organisation based in Stoke-on-Trent. We are a community interest organisation and we organise uh, exhibitions around uh, Stoke. And our remit is to put high quality visual arts exhibitions on in the city, not only to promote what we do in the city, but to promote the individual artists as well. Dust Rising began um, as part of a series of exhibitions uh, that I initiated and curated with Andy Cook. Uh, originally to start and to promote the City of Culture Bid 2021. Um, that then was developed um, into Dust Rising. Um, the Dust exhibitions, um, for that we, we uh, put on six exhibitions uh, across Stoke-on-Trent um, in all the different, uh, different towns. Um, and then that continued on to Dust Rising, where we put an uh, exhibition on in Hanley last year, and then DR19, uh, which took place at Spode um, in Stoke in 2019. Uh, the reason for creating Dust and Dust Rising uh, was because um, we, we felt there was a gap um, on the offer, um, what the art and culture offer, uh, was available uh, to um, participants and audience in Stoke-on-Trent um, and to bring more visual arts uh, to the area because that, that seemed to be a little gap um, that appeared there and that's I think our main interest um, as a group. As I say they started as dust, uh, dust exhibitions um, and we went to all the times in Stoke-on-Trent and we looked for buildings that were um, that may be of interest, of heritage interest, of interest to artists. Um, we took um, the exhibition to Longton Town Hall, to the Wedgwood Institute um, in Burslem, um, Fenton Library and uh, Tunstall Bath. So each of those um, buildings were of some significant interest to the people in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, and then that encouraged, hopefully encouraged people to come. So not only to see the artwork, but probably to see the buildings as well, which was quite a nice, um, uh, we thought was quite a nice part of that. I think that's the really significant thing, that uh, it gives a real opportunity for artists to respond to a place and make some new work. But it also shows that you don't need prestigious art galleries to put in contemporary work. In fact, it really is a great way to bring in people who are not threatened by those types of environment to bring them in to see contemporary work. And we're really pushing that strongly, I think, to help to build audiences for individual artists. You know, we have a university producing visual artists here every year and they don't really have huge opportunities after they've graduated to show work and we, we really want to promote that too. In previously we've had um, uh, in-kind support by Stoke-on-Trent City Council mm -hmm. by the access to use the buildings that we used which also included um, uh, Hanley Town Hall um, and um, the Victoria Hall um, and some of those spaces uh, so um, the Stoke-on-Trent Council had supported us right from the beginning by the in-kind access to um, the buildings uh, which was um, this was really good. Yeah. <coughs> and, we, and being quite strategic about it, working to what the city itself needs, looking at gaps where we think we could fill things that don't currently go on. And uh, my first involvement was um, putting some work in the town hall in Handy in 2018. And that is a real opportunity to introduce new venues but also to actually say there's a group of artists out there working seriously in the city about the city. With DR19 we also um, invited uh, graduates mm. to take part which was quite successful and uh, they uh, felt more confident after being in the show as well. So yeah, we didn't we pick them out in, in, yeah. and, and identify them as graduates. Mm -hmm. We invited them to be part of a group of artists exhibiting. Mm -hmm. So the and they were really, they were very grateful that they didn't get pointed at. You know that because they're just one of the professional artists in the city now, mm -hmm. and they really appreciated being highlighted because of that.
that that was um, a huge opportunity for them to be part of um, you know an ongoing artist-led um, series of exhibitions so they got a lot from that both from being part <coughs> of the exhibition and the discussion and the developments they made from being part of DR19. So as a result we will definitely continue with that again with future ones. Um, One of them has already set up an initiative in Longton since the exhibition anyway so it just gives people that sort of impetus really to do more. Mm. Each of the exhibition is has a, um, a very um, loose theme as such. Uh, the first dust exhibitions were based on the colours um, that we used for the promotional material, um, and that was quite um, you know, a colour link um, to the city and the different um, the different towns within the city. Um, and then um, since that dust rising um, was maybe uh, more about the buildings. Um, and what goes on in those buildings um, and artists could respond to um, the buildings or what, what has gone on to so the her heritage and the actual um, uh, current use of the buildings was taken into account um, and then DR19 um, was really then connected to again to our interest in in you know architecture heritage the buildings and what artists and what visual artists might how they might respond to that so yes, each 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 one has a theme and will continue to have but a very loose theme, so in the widest possible sense, mm -hmm. in order to get the best um, and the most interesting work and response from visual artists. I think as an organisation too, you recognise that working in partnership with others is really important. And we discuss with the North Staffordshire Society of Architects uh, to be involved in a project with us. So that helped us think about the location as being the subject but also the fact that we were exhibiting in Spode this year and at the same time as the British Ceramics Biennial so those synchronicities those things going on really helped to focus uh, what we were doing but also like Joyce said you don't want it to be so specific that the artists can't use it in their way to follow their mm -hmm. track as well as answering the brief maybe. <laughs> this is always a difficult one. So, I think we work really well as a team, yeah. but uh, there are moments when um, I found myself just scraping paint off a window because I could do that, and Cornelia ended up doing all the budgets because she's really good at that. And I think you evolve as a but team. I did don't loads you? of mopping as well. Uh, you did lots of mopping. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I, I think uh, uh, Joyce had the uh, contacts because of the past, mm. and uh, so we it so, sort of falls into. To place that we all we have roles in it. We um, all introduced ourselves as artists, yeah. curators, and directors. But actually, when it comes to doing it, we divide the roles sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. We, we we share tasks, and we also divide tasks when when we need to. So there are things like because I've done quite a number of site specific things in other cities. Mm -hmm. uh, I did some training of the invigilators to help and, and the health and safety stuff, you know, so mm. those things fall into place, I think. Mm. I think the, the biggest uh, test for us was doing the bid to the Arts Council, you know, mm. there we, we, we sat for ages and, and, and it's crucial that you have a group of people that can think on their feet but can take a problem away and then come back together a week later and write mm. it up and I think we did that and got money this time um, and it, in the end having just done our evaluation of the last project it's been a real pleasure to work with people where you have that same aim but you know you can contribute something different to it to the group as well and I'd say that to any new organization you know just think of the makeup of what you've got there and be quite critical of, of saying we've got to do, someone's got to do that, someone's got to do that, yeah. and if you can't do it, find someone who can help you to do it. And, that, and that's the thing that's I think that's important to mention that uh, artists, not only us, are making it happen, but artists who um, are taking part in exhibitions, yeah, associate artists, who have we, we uh, a big role in um, making it happen, yeah. and they share tasks as well with us. And but we've been them. adamant all the way through mm -hmm. that we are an artist-led organisation, that wants to promote the artists as well as the artwork in the city and I think for us that's key that we are we we make we do the artwork as well as just manage the organization mm -hmm.
because we, we don't really, and I suppose we don't really have what, what people might see as traditional, you know, curator or director roles within RCIC. I think that we all work together um, and, you know, we, we, we have different roles within it. But if someone, you know, it doesn't want to do something or isn't, maybe has, hasn't, had, hasn't got that skill, um, the other person or one of the other people will, will sort of um, cover that. So we work really well together as a team. Um, but not necessarily in the traditional way mm. that people might think. Although saying that, if you ask them, I would produce a file for anything that would be a problem. <laughs> a document, <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah, a calendar, yeah. <laughs> or a spreadsheet. Yeah, no, that's very good. You need someone who could actually do that side of it oh, as well. You know? yeah. um, but I think um, when, when you develop an organization, you know, most of these don't appear out of the blue. They mm. they have history. You know, you had history in the city. I had history mm. working in other organisations in and in universities. So you bring those things to it. It's not starting from scratch. But being straight, if you don't know how to do it, you have to go and find someone. Mm -hmm. um, setting up the CIC um, was um, for us a bit of a challenge because um, none of us had really that much experience in that. So we um, actually went to um, VAST um, and got some um, information from them. Um, and then we uh, looked through the information that we had to provide and what we needed to do. Um, and then that was how then we, we, we set that up. So the CIC was, was quite challenging. And I think um, if anyone's thinking about doing that, you do need to take a little bit of advice maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we, did, we did seek that advice because we didn't have that experience. So, and it, it's, um, a, it's a lot of reading to do. And also uh, we had, at some point, we had a choice whether we want to be a, a charity organization or a community interest organization. And there's differences between the two as well, which, we kind of had to tackle and figure out which one we fit in better. But I think it also signals because you're registered at a company's house, you have mm -hmm. to log your accounts, that you, you're not uh, casual, you become a serious organisation uh, and you have a commitment to your aims and mm. objectives which are set out in companies. And I think that was important for us that we, we're not saying, oh, we're just doing a few projects here. Mm -hmm. We are actually doing something which is about a long term commitment. Evaluating what we've done uh, and then projecting that forward is, is really the most important thing, I think. And uh, we doing audience feedback, that's been terrific for us. You know, it seems mm -hmm. a you know, laborious process is to ask people to fill in cards or do interviews with them, but that's really helped. And mm -hmm. that, you know, I think that's the important thing that you build on the expertise. I think the premise is that you get a a grand scenario and then you work it down to earth don't you so that it becomes viable then so it's basically a fluid process and it changes along the way mm. as well uh, yeah don't be afraid of the change that's it, what it depends you know whether the project we're planning is bigger smaller the time yeah. frames might be different um, we need to figure out a theme or well we don't need to but we as Joyce said before we tend to we tend to, we, we like to have um, a starting point, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, can't stress the, the, the importance of it being a very loose. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, the, the, going back to the planning um, of, of, of the project, um, the timing of the project um, it has been thought about really in, in the context of the other things that are happening in Stoke on Trent around the, the, the different times of the year. Mm -hmm. So we looked at that quite closely. Um, to find when different things were on and how we might um, enhance the offer of art and culture within the city. Mm. So finding out what else is on and where we might um, be able to fit into that um, to that sort of timeline um, and then working back um, to try and get funding um, so we can um, you know, offer what we wanted to, to, to offer. Uh, initially, the funding uh, for the dust exhibitions um, were self-funded, so they were artist-funded. Um, there was um, some um, in-kind, um, obviously from Stoke-on-Trent City Council, um, and as we sort of built um, our relationship with, with them, and we did get a small amount of funding um, from uh, from Stoke-on-Trent Council, um, but it was initially self-funded and artist-led funded. 
Um, and then as we've gone on and we've, we've obviously um, you know, started the CIC and then reapplied under um, as DR19. Um, and then not only did we have um, Stoke on Trent City Council funding um, and access to buildings, but also um, with, along with some, um, you know, actual um, monetary funding, um, arts, concept, arts Council funding. So um, we were Arts Council funded this time as well for DR19, which was really nice to get. Mm. So you could actually pay artists a reasonable fee, which we hadn't really been able to do, so we were relying on their goodwill. Um, so for DR19 we were actually allowed to um, offer commissions and pay artists, which was lovely. And we also uh, put into the bid, and were successful, to actually pay people to invigilate. So asking them to be proactive wasn't something you would necessarily think of when they were volunteers, but to actually mm -hmm. say, you're doing this. It wasn't a huge amount of money, but I think the idea that um, artists would do it for nothing when they're very poor anyway is not a way we should be going forward. Marketing is a big thing, actually. Yeah. I think marketing has become a much, um, a much bigger thing than we initially thought. Yeah. Uh, much, much larger, um, you know, than um, you know things like social social media. So mm -hmm. social media has, you know, even in the last five years, has become huge. Um, so for us, that's a new challenge because we have to then go out and find, um, you know, can we get um, any help with that, um, where we might get that. So social media and marketing has been um, something that we're we're working on currently as a big challenge. Mm. <laughs> and certainly in terms of. The, the discussion around it, you know, the idea of reach and how far you've got out there is so key to it now and how many people know, particularly of an organisation that's going to carry on doing projects, you want your name to be out there as much as the project you're currently doing. So I think it's really important that you, you know, you, with this, we, it's one of our big things that we're planning at the moment about how we have a marketing strategy. And, uh, you know, we don't have those skills, so we have to be looking mm -hmm. for those skills and support from somewhere and getting getting funds to, to, to pay that. I mean, obviously, leaflets and flyers are just obvious things to do. Um, but, yeah, social media, which we, I think, did quite well. Yeah, I think we did it okay. But uh, we, we have actually figured out that yeah. through DR19 that we need some more help with that uh, because it's, it's, you know, quite a big task, basically. I think the important thing of partnerships, it can't be overstated, that you know the, the fact that we worked with the BCB and uh, they were on and we were on and that, that the, we shared audiences, some came to us that went on to them and mm -hmm. uh, came to us from them and that was really key because we could, we could use that and what we wouldn't have necessarily got here is the type of international audience that the British Ceramics Biennial would and they came in and were really interested and are now following us on social media so it really pays off. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest challenges um, is really to try and get audience and participants and get people to come. How do you get people to come to to to, sh to see shows? Mm -hmm. um, and the funding to put the exhibition and the events and workshops on. Probably. Yeah. I've described the Stoke before as a slow city, in the best sense of the slow movement. That it, you know, the, it's here. You've just got to make sure people know about it and actually get it out there. And it is quite difficult. I think one of the really successful things of the Dust series and Dust uh, DR19 is the fact that we're in non threatening buildings. They're not prestigious cultural buildings, which people might be a little bit frightened of. And also, we're working with organisations to bring people in, you know, so we're working with other community organisations. Um, uh, the West End Centre down in Stoke we worked with this year for uh, DR19 which allowed us to go to them as well as them coming to us which I think is really important. When it comes to the audience it's you know um, just an example um, when I talk to local people um, some people you know still are not aware of British Ceramic Biennial being on as well and that's mm. That's quite a big, you know, event, mm -hmm. <laughs> which, you know, which makes us think, well, how many people know about dust rising, you know, we're only smaller, 
So yeah, it's it's I think yeah, bringing audience is the biggest challenge, and social media and marketing is mm. a big um, I guess big help. And One of the things we did at workshop day about using venues and about doing the type of project mm -hmm. we're doing and one of the things we underestimate too is how difficult often it is just for people to get about the city yeah. so you know transport strategies and things like that become really important to organizations like mm -hmm. us because you've got to get an audience there and if they can't get there immediately then maybe they decide not to go so that is really key i think putting exhibitions on where people can get to uh, mm -hmm. Particularly, you know, on public transport, I think is really important. Give it plenty of time uh, because there's a lot of things you have to do in terms of health and safety. Uh, working with partners, because we worked with the City Council at the Spode site and you've worked with City Council across the city, mm -hmm. make sure you, you, you know how you can manage that site for health and safety and also that uh, the artists can actually come in and use the resource of the site as well is really key. For example at um, uh, DR19 quite a number of us actually found materials there we use so it's good to actually be working with people on the site as well. They were great at Spode yeah. in allowing us to do that. Uh, I'd say consider practical things as well mm. like the cold in the yeah. buildings, the dump. Yeah. We had at some point we had some leaking, yeah. you know, leakage in the building, and we had to deal with that Damn. as well. Damn. But that, that's interesting <laughs> because you know, it, going into buildings where people think nothing could ever happen in there, and yeah. certainly, spoke people came along and said, oh, "This is amazing here, isn't it?" And I think sometimes we don't know what we've got in the city until you can mm -hmm. show people. Mm -hmm. Damp or not. <laughs> <laughs> Just to add to that really about the um, site specific or the site um, related um, exhibitions and how the artists respond to that, it's really important for us because that's how you get the most exciting creative work. Because as you as, as an artist have to respond to um, either a building or a specific area or something that's happening within that, then access to that building or access to that space is really important and that you feel safe and comfortable and that you, you think that there's something you can create artwork mm -hmm. um, in response to that. Which was really yeah. great at Spode actually because Beautiful. because of the security yeah. there yeah. and yeah. other events happening like DCB mm -hmm. so uh, yeah. Maintain perseverance, persistence and mm -hmm. determination mm -hmm. that your project or whatever you want to do will happen no matter what stands in your way because there will be lots of um, lots of things that will get in the way. So I think for me, those were the things. So determination, persistence, and perseverance. And remember, you're not on your own. There'll be other organisations out there that have done it before, and those partnerships are really key. Uh, don't give up. That's what I would say. I would say um, look for help with others as well, because you are not on your own. And, you know, there might be things you will be difficult to, for you to yeah. find out on your own so maybe try to look for help from others and actually have a um, you know a team of people or people that you know that you feel confident you can um, you know rely on them and be part of a team to deliver something because you can't do it on your own you do need those partnerships both large partnerships and small partnerships and also mm -hmm. it's a lot more fun when you do it with yeah, others yeah, <laughs> yeah don't yeah don't write out the fund. <laughs> we do Please have fun don't write out the fund. <laughs> and it, it is deep down. Yeah. yeah.